Hi guys, welcome back to Hit the Green TMD in O-Gage. Today, something slightly different with thinking outside the box to what we normally have, this box. Let's take a look inside. Here we have the box. It's from Lens and it is indeed O-Gage. Now, this O-Gage is 1 45th scale, not the 1 43.5 that the UK is just as much fun as trying to get out of a peak uh, depot box but there's a clue instruction sheet for the Deutsche Bahn V100 BR212 class that's what's in the box And there it is. Well, that's well packaged. And. Oh, look, no bits falling off. That makes a change. <laughs> so, let's see what we can get it out. There we go. So just put that to one side for a second. Yep, definitely zero bits floating around in the bottom. So. In comparison to the British market, you get one complete loco rather than uh, a kit of locos. Taking the mickey really, you know, little bits falling off the British locos is no real drama. And what do we get? Well, obviously it's O gauge, it's diesel, it's a Bobo loco, so comparable to a lot of British stuff. It's heavy. You can see in there it's got a central motor, flywheels, all-wheel drive, wheel pickups rather than scrapers like you get on gauge one and things like that and Continental HO which can have uh, the skid for these picking up off the middle of the track. We have a driver inside the loco and it is a nicely detailed cab driver's position on both sides different ends on this end the detail is nicely painted now this has cost me 478 euros brand new from Germany it's very heavy and to be honest all this detail on the bogies and things I have no issue with possibly knocking things off handrails, you know, not flying across the room. So, in that respect, the quality of the build is very robust. Sprung buffers, which are metal. This loco is digital, sound fitted. Again, this is 478 euros. So, really. I'm saying pretty good outside the box a little bit now we may say that this is a bit odd for me to purchase however these locos which is actually the V uh, BR211 locos identical brother to this but uh, slightly less power these were used to construct the channel tunnel or part of it they were paired up in Cheriton with a great big pipe running across into a, a wagon behind with an air scrubber for working inside the channel tunnel for track laying and I suppose overhead line things and bits and pieces like that. So it is sort of a continuation of my topic which is Project Channel as you remember the green being used as part of that to construct the channel tunnel so albeit the wrong color for that it is uh, a good looking loco let's look at some functionality of the loco so one thing we do have is cab lights and that is on uh, function six and it illuminates the interior nicely 
and you can see all the desks in there with the moulded detail. Inside the grill here there is a fan, it's non-rotating but I don't find that an issue. I sort of find rotating games a bit gimmicky, additional noise that you don't need and all that. But again, we got nice finely detailed bits and pieces on the body. And we do have some nice detail on the bogies which would look better weathered because it will make them stand out more than they actually do as is the norm with all the models that I've had the class 60s of 33 and all that once you add some frame dirt and mat it down the detail actually pops but as you'd expect in this scale all the writing is highly legible really crisp and nicely printed one of the functions we have on this loco, being digital, is an automatic uncoupler. So what you do using function 2 is select the direction away from the rolling stock, press F2, and the hooks will move away. And then you can drive your loco away and leave the train where you want it. And if you come up, draw up close with the loco, it sort of works in the opposite direction as well. So you maintain driving towards direction. Press F2. And you can get the coupling sound. Sort of, I don't assume that that is what it is for. It's just trying to uncouple the other end, but it works in both directions. So you get a nice gentle ease up. Lighting functions, what we have is they're independently switchable from each end. I learned that one. F0 is the front of the loco and F1 is the rear of the loco. So we have direction controlled, red and white lights. You also have the function on F5, which is shunting lights. So if whatever end is turned on, we'll go to the three white lights. So you'll have three white lights both ends if you have both directions lights illuminated. What we also have is a bell. I don't know if that is a shunting bell or whether it's sort of for use in yards or whatever, level crossings, foot crossings, I don't know. But um, I'm sure someone out there will be able to tell me for the, the purpose of the bells on German railway locomotives. We have a short whistle and a long whistle for the guard. And we also have a locomotive horn, which is playable the longer you hold the button, the longer it plays. We have a radio call. And that's pretty much the functions that I've managed to work out so far, not being able to understand the German manual. But that is what we have. And of course we have the engine sound.
wants to change his gear or whatever he does on a hydraulic locomotive. I don't know exactly how they work. So we'll see how he goes in slow speed. Notch one. Speed step one. pretty good. This has got some magnetic sensor on the motor and that allows it to control with very slow speed, which it seems to do superbly. Zero speed selected. If I just tip the loco off one side, it creeps until it finds power again. The loco automatically finds a clean bit of track if you try to stop it on a bit of dirt. That's something different. But if you lift the entire loco off, it stops immediately. So it doesn't drive off if you come off the end of the track or into a dead section. But again, I'll put it in the opposite direction, so driving that way, and just lose power on one side, and it just seeks a little spot where it gets power back and then it stops. Pretty nifty. do have an issue with on my layout because it's not designed for it. Oh, I just bring the loco in close, here she comes. British loading gauge versus continental loading gauge even though this is a different scale so it's actually smaller than it should be. Bits on the roof won't actually fit through my scenic brake on Hither Green. take from that well I quite like that locomotive actually it's very good the quality of its manufacture is high you get a lot for your money TCC sound for a bargain price technically like I say that loco those two wagons together combined cost the same as a Helgen gauge loco again I'm emphasizing the fact I'm not slating what we pay for Helgen it's a different product to a, to a point um, you know, two motors, really heavyweight locomotives, and, and are well made. However, they can be a bit delicate in some ways. This is quite robust. None of the detail wants to fall off when you, if you rough handle it at all. And sound quality is high. And again, that little magic um, thing in the box there that allows it to look for a clean bit of track if you stop it on a bit of dirt. 
very well thought out the coupling system if you don't mind the hook on the front excellent you know if you're driving into a station you want to do a run round maneuver you don't have to get your hands in there no magnets in the track or anything like that you just press the button and it unhooks itself an excellent item so there we go there's a little look at something that you can get as an alternative to a British modern O gauge and in the future I may well get some more of this and build a German layout why not the stuff is out there the products are there and are good quality so give me your opinion of the locomotives that we looked at today in the comments section below details of the real logo use of the bell anything like that always useful and uh, borderlands the knowledge base that we have enjoy your bottling stay safe see you soon bye